Hey guys, so this is Coda, and Coda is at Happy Tales all the way from New York City. His dad lives in Queens, which means his lifestyle is filled with city streets and traffic and bikes and people and all kinds of things coming Coda's way. Unfortunately, Coda doesn't always handle his stress in the best way because he's a little bit of an anxious dude, as you can tell. So his dad, Frank, came to Happy Tales looking to help Coda learn how to gain some more confidence, learn how to handle his stress in better ways, and learn how to cope with the world around him being so overwhelming. So unfortunately, training doesn't fix anxiety. So that's not something that we can just train out of him. But through training, we can start to open a line of communication so that we can start to communicate with Coda with how we want him to handle his stress better. So when a dog is introduced to something new or different or unique, or maybe even scary or overwhelming, dogs will respond in one of four ways. So unfortunately for Coda, his response can sometimes be fight. Fight is where a dog lunges or barks or growls or snaps or even bites to try to get the threat to go away. So for example, when his dad is walking the city streets in Queens, sometimes he lunges at people coming head on at him. We need to make sure that we teach Coda that's not acceptable. So today we're gonna to be working at Partridge Creek to see how he handles the world kind of swirling around him and people coming at him from the side and from behind and in front and see if we can help him make better decisions. Another stress response that dogs will do when they feel a little too overwhelmed is they'll go into flight mode. Flight is where dogs remove themselves or they move away away from something that they're intimidated by so that they create space for themselves. Some dogs, when they're feeling stressed out and overwhelmed, will also just go into avoidance, which is where they literally just act like the threat isn't there. They almost clamor up and kind of shut down a little bit in nervousness or fear. And this is where it's really up to us as the humans to advocate for him and make sure that that threat does not come closer or apply more pressure. But we can't guarantee that Coda will accept the crazy world around him. And a big part of acceptance is that he ultimately starts to trust Frank will always advocate for him and never put him in a situation where he feels like he's got to defend himself. And that's part of what leadership does when owners really take leadership. For so unfortunately, this process can take a really, really long time. But Coda's in a residency with us at Happy Tales, and this is his third week. He actually scheduled an extended residency, and we're doing some custom things with him in his residency, like a bunch of field trips to try to set him up for success because the real world isn't a training center and the real world for Coda is not neighborhoods and wooded areas like we have near Happy Tales. So his dad and I customized a plan and today we're on a field trip at Partridge. So let's see how he does. Beautiful manners. Let's go. Good boy. Before we make our way in, we're gonna start with nice calm manners so that we don't start with chaos. If we start with him pulling or acting all chaotic, we're just gonna set him and everybody else up inside for failure. Let's go, buddy. Good boy. Little clingy walking in. You can see that where he's just kind of bumping into my leg. Definitely see he's alert, the ears popped up. Yeah, good job, good decision, buddy. Good boy. A big part of Coda's foundation at Happy Tales was starting to teach him how to walk on a leash. So when we walk a dog in a heel, it essentially gives them a job. So they have to focus on the position rather than focusing on the rest of the world. So you can definitely tell that Coda is focusing on the rest of the world, but he's not so focused on it that he can't focus on me still and the position that we want him to walk. Beautiful, Coda.
So a big part of the success in a program like this is that we're watching the world around him so that we can be sure that he's never set up for failure where somebody comes and reaches for him or tries to pet him. So I'm gonna watch his body language and he's gonna tell me when he's starting to feel apprehensive. And if I notice the apprehension, I'm definitely going to make sure that I create the space for him by not letting people be too close. Good decision, buddy. That was good. Hi. Good, how are you? Are you going to be using that blower? Okay, I'm going to move because it might freak him out a little bit. I'm not going this way. I'm going this way. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Let's go, buddy. That's an example of what advocating is. As I noticed this guy had like a big blower and it looked like he was going to use it. That's probably going to freak him out. So I asked the guy, he says, yes, I'm going to move Koto away from it. Let's go, buddy. Good boy. There's the blower. He's definitely alert, recognizing it. He did so good at them all. I won't say he was totally comfortable. He showed a ton of stress signals and a lot of nervous body language, but he ended up making really good decisions, which is a real big start to his progress. Oh, good job, buddy. Let's go, let's go. Good boy. Yay, good decision. Very nice. Good job, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. So a big part of advocating for a dog is if you're walking in a store like this and I see something down the aisle and I think, mm, that may be a bit challenging for Coda. The first thing I'm gonna do is look down at him and read his body language and see, is he telling me that he's uncomfortable? Yep, okay, let's go buddy. I'm gonna take the world off his shoulders, put it right on mine and take control. What I'm communicating to him is, dude, you don't have to worry about what's behind you. I got this. And so that way we teach our dogs to focus on us when they're stressed and not worry about the rest of the world. Let's go this way, buddy. Nice job. Once you learn how to read body language, it's so easy to help our dogs because ultimately they're going to tell you or tell us as the humans when they're not feeling so confident or when they're starting to tense up a little bit or when they're starting to get nervous. And if we learn how to read what they're telling us and then we go to action to advocate for them, we're not gonna have any problems. Where problems come in is when people aren't paying attention and they're just lollygagging around Lowe's and they're not paying attention to what's going on with their dog and then all of a sudden they're feeling so much pressure and there's no one there to help them and so then somebody reaches to go say hello and then he says rah to say too much pressure move away and the problem is that we didn't help him and we didn't advocate for him so the very cool thing about today is that Coda made so many good decisions but I also was constantly watching his body language because if his body language and his stress cues told me that I was putting him in a situation that was just far too hard for him, then we might have had something go bad or we might have had him lunge or bark or snap or do something that we didn't want him to do. But he was never put in that position. 
And the reason that I know he wasn't in that position was because A, I was always having a head on a swivel to see what's going on. And B, I'm constantly watching Coda to see what is he telling me. Our dogs are telling us what they're feeling. We just have to learn how to read it.